Jeremy here on the Wood Wildcrafter channel and I'm coming to you on day 25 of the Big Wild Year Challenge. 365 days of only eating wild food. So Delphine and I have been cooking up various wild food meals which you've seen here on Facebook and on Delphine's Instagram account. And I'm going to show you another meal today that's similar but a little bit different uh, from some meals that I've been cooking over the last few weeks. Although this is day 25 for me, You'll see this video on day 32, which is also about the time that we're going to set up another live stream question and answer and big wild year update. So please also watch for that. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take some uh, bare neck roast. I'm going to debone the neck roast. It's already been cooked, but I'm pulling all that meat off. I'm going to fry it in some bear fat and add some cranberries. Um, and maple syrup. So this is a recipe that I've been doing in a few different iterations and I've been really happy with it and I'm going to do it again tonight. Uh, I'm also going to do a side dish with some Jerusalem artichokes also known as sunchokes and you've seen me process these in another video. If you haven't you can go through my backlog of videos and find that video um, but what I've done is I've dried them down into little chips they're going to get cooked in water until they're soft and then I'm going to deep fry them in raccoon fat and basically create the wild food equivalent of uh, kind of a mix between a potato chip and a french fry. Uh, so they're not really crispy uh, but they really have that potato chip kind of starchy flavor um, and I they're really good. They're, it's hard to stop eating them so follow along and I'll show you what I'm up to. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is throw some bear fat into my cast iron pan, uh, put about this much. So this jar here, this is all the bear fat that I've used so far in the last 25 days, which is not very much, but that is partly because I've also been substituting with raccoon fat and some of the bear meat that I've been roasting, such as in my slow cooker, uh, already has a lot of fat in it. Here's the bear roast that has been in my slow cooker since a couple days ago so uh, essentially what I've got here are neck bones which I'm removing and uh, I'll try and get the marrow out of them though as I as I see it what I typically do with these is throw them in my wood fire and I do that because I always add the uh, ash around, uh, not always directly on, but around my garden. I don't like to uh, overdo it, um, but I have to throw the ashes somewhere, and so I figure that that's as good a place as any. And I'll tell you what is not a good place for putting your ashes, and that is on your walkway. Uh, some people do that thinking that you'll get good traction from it and you do but you also track all that ash right back into your house and then your little uh, snowy boot prints become little snowy ash filled boot prints and it makes a real mess. So I'm going to basically pull apart um, this neck roast, you can see even when the meat is cooked, it's still, parts of it are very, very pink colored. Um, uh, I'm going to peel that off in strips. That's going into my pan. I'm not going to use the whole roast tonight. There's more here than I will eat in a meal. So I'm going to use half of it and the rest of it, I'll probably do something similar tomorrow. Now you'll notice in the slow cooker, I also have a lot of leftover juices from the roast. And in the big wild year, every meal tends to lead to another meal, um, especially if it starts in a slow cooker, then it's gonna end up in a soup pot. So all these juices, I'm gonna transfer over to my ongoing um, stock on my wood stove that is simmering away. And I'll turn that into some kind of a soup or if it gets especially thick, what I'll do is I'll um, scoop out all these little
I have a pretty busy stove going on because I'm uh, also doing a chicken noodle soup for my kids tonight um, and then cooking other things besides for myself. So what I've got here are the dried sunchoke chips. Uh, so I took the fresh Jerusalem artichoke roots, sliced them with a mandolin and dried them in the dehydrator and they're very dry so they're crispy uh, but they'll hold their shape if I simmer them in hot water so I'm going to get my water heating up and I'm going to throw in maybe two and a half handfuls of these guys and then once they're cooked I'm going to drain them and I'll get some raccoon fat deep frying in this little pan and I'll just add them maybe eight or ten at a time fry them and then take them out uh, they're so good that you can't really get ahead of yourself you end up eating them before you finish cooking them um, but I have uh, this jar that I've now used two-thirds of it Delphine's used one of these jars basically um, so we've used two approximately in a month and I have five jars left so maybe another two and a half months worth of Jerusalem artichokes, depending on how often and in what quantity we eat them. So the bear fat and bear meat, I'm gonna start to get that hot on a pan at the back. I'm gonna just cook that under medium heat. Um, and I basically want the meat to start crisping up a little bit on the edges and browning. I'm also going to add some frozen cranberries in here and let them cook at the same time that the meat is cooking. So these cranberries here are actually ones that I picked two years ago. So I'd like to use them up first. I do have some fresher cranberries and they're really fantastic. I got these at a popular cranberry picking bog near my hometown. Um, so this is a like one full handful. I'm just gonna add that in here. Let those kind of cook up with the bear meat. And here's one of my five jars of raccoon fat. And you'll notice that when I rendered it, it separated into layers. There's a very clear fat layer on top. Uh, and then it's uh, there's a cloudy layer and then there's even a line I don't know if it's showing very well but there's a line there's even a third separation here and I I don't know enough about fat to know what the difference is exactly between those three layers uh, but I'm thinking that if I rendered it longer uh, maybe these are because there's some water mixed in with these fats uh, and not that I've had any trouble cooking with them, but I really like the look of this really clear fat on the top. So that's, uh, I got five of these jars from two raccoons. I'm going to top up my little pan here with raccoon fat. And I'll have to free up an element in a minute so that I can get this hot enough to deep fry my Jerusalem artichokes. The meat is sticking to the pan, so I'm going to add some more bear fat. Uh, and I cook it a little bit more. I want the meat to brown up a little bit more and I'd like the cranberries to cook a little bit more. It looks like I've just about used up my first little pot of bear fat. So far so good. My artichokes are not cooking yet, and you can see that the raccoon fat, even though it went in 
uh, with that different color to it, it's gone clear while it's at a higher temperature and it's starting to bubble a bit. So I'm going to turn that down until my grease and water soaks are ready. Alright, the meat's uh, pretty much where I want it to be and it's starting to dry out in the pan a bit. So I'm going to add maple syrup. This is half a liter jar and this is the second one that I'm on in the 25 days. So we'll add some maple syrup. We're going to turn the heat off on that pan and we're going to stir it around and let the meat soak up all that sugar. And I'm pretty sure that my favorite way to eat bear meat now is with maple syrup. It just soaks it up and it tastes super. So there's nothing real fancy about this. Neck roast meat, wild cranberries, maple syrup, bear fat. But it's going to be very tasty. And we'll just leave that to stay warm on that element now that it's turned off. Maybe I'll cool it down a bit. Oh! Excuse me. And over here, my kid's chicken noodle soup is looking all right. Jerusalem artichokes at the back are just getting up to temperature. So you might wonder about this, uh, why I wouldn't just drop them in uh, to the oil as they are. And because when they're dry, they have no water. And if you drop them in the oil, nothing really happens. You need to have them uh, moist. So this one's been soaking up water and then it's the water that um, cooks and evaporates when you put them in the hot oil. Let's have a look at this. So it's just a little pan that I'm using here. I don't have so much fat to spare that I'm going to fill a big pot with it for deep frying. Here's another wet Jerusalem artichoke. And away it goes. So you want to wait for them to mostly stop bubbling. So that means all the water that's cooked out of them. And they will start to brown up a bit. And they will start to get a little bit crispy. When I did this before, I cooked them all the way through um, and then put them in to deep fry them. These guys haven't really cooked yet. They've just absorbed moisture as a dry chip. Um, so maybe, maybe they will be a little crispier We'll just let this one cool down a minute. I need to adjust some temperatures over here. Cool down a bit. Give it a try. <gasps> it's crispy. And it's fatty. It's like a real potato chip almost. I'm going to drain those guys right now so that they don't overcook and we're going to fry some more. Let's start production over here.
So through the last 25 days, I've been pretty careful to include a green and berries and meat protein in every day. Uh, and also drinking at least a liter of an herbal tea. So I make a different herbal tea every day or I basically just keep adding to my pot of ever tea that's going on. Uh, today I had white pine needles. I had uh, rose hips, some goldenrod. Uh, on other days I had sweet fern, cedar leaves, clover. Uh, so all the different things that you saw us showcase in our big wild year hoard, wild food hoard. And most of the meat that I've been eating, I've had a fair bit of fat with it. And obviously there'll be a fair bit of raccoon fat in with these Jerusalem artichokes. And over the last 25 days, so I haven't weighed myself since uh, this past Monday, but as of this past Monday, I had lost eight or nine pounds over the, whatever that would be, 22 day 21 day period um, so I have lost some weight but it's weight that I probably needed to lose anyway and I'll be interested to see if as in my 35 day experiment in another year if my weight drop uh, plateaus and then I maintain at a certain weight level so I am eating a pretty good quantity every day and pretty good variety never really mastered the art of getting all my dishes cooked and prepped at the so they finish at the same time but the meat is keeping warm at the back I'm just snacking on it while I cook these sun choke chips and it's really really good it's tender it's got maple syrup flavor it's otherwise kind of a mild meat it's got just enough little uh, burnt dry pieces. Sometimes I really like that when the, you get almost like a crispy edge on the meat, but the inside is tender. So it's got that feature as well. And then the cranberries. I just have that tangy, sweet cranberry flavor and it's uh, really complementing the meat as well as getting me some uh, carbohydrates and some vitamin C. I know a lot of people think that we would be ketogenic on this diet, but we have been eating um, greens every day, berries every day, and maple sugar every day. And we've been periodically checking for ketosis and it has consistently been negative or trace ketones in our fasted morning urine. So I would say that we are not in ketosis and have not really been in ketosis for the three and a half weeks that we've been doing this. Uh, and maple sugar, I've learned, is quite a bit different from other refined sugars in that it has a very low glycemic uh, index value. So you absorb it a little more slowly and it doesn't spike your insulin the way that uh, refined cane sugar or beet sugar or other white sugars do. So it's good. I don't think I'm going to plate this and show it all in a plate. You've seen it in the pan. Um, these uh, artichoke chips, very good, They're a little bit crunchy. They've got a satisfying amount of fat in them. The raccoon fat, at least in my palate, is very mild. Like I think if you fed these to anybody else, they wouldn't really know that you hadn't used uh, any other regular kitchen oil. So there's a little recipe for you and a bit of a week three update. 
We will do another live stream soon. And I know you guys will have lots of great questions for us, which we'll try to answer them all. Um, it is a little bit difficult to keep up to everybody when the questions are rolling in that fast. Uh, but we'll do our best. If you want to watch more Big Wild Year videos, you should check out my uh, Big Wild Year playlist and my backlog of videos. Also, we started a Facebook page, which is simply called Big Wild Year, capital B, capital W, capital Y, and spaces between the words. You'll see our pictures there. Um, and there's also lots of great food videos, uh, short videos, and food pictures on Delphi's Instagram account, at Delphi Collier. So you can continue to follow along and we do really enjoy your comments um, and your stories that you share with us and it's a learning experience so if you know something that we don't we we'd love to hear it from you and we try and incorporate it into what we are doing thanks guys